Jason Belmonte has two major championships this year alone. Eight for his career. You know what he doesn't have? A doubles championship. Will he get by with a little help from his good friend Bill O'Neill? We'll find out. It's Roth Homan doubles time live right now. Side Bowl and Rooftop Bar here in downtown Portland, Maine for the MainQuarterly.com Roth Holman PBA Doubles Championship. An atmosphere unlike any other in professional bowling. Now, let's meet the five teams who are competing for the Roth Holman Doubles Championship. Kirk? Here are your finalists. The number five seeds. He's looking for his first career national title win today. From Houston, Texas, Sean Maldonado. His partner has two PBA Tour national titles from Friendswood, Texas, D.J. Archer. The number four seeds. He's making his first career TV finals appearance from Westerville, Ohio, Zeke Bate. His partner owns three PBA Tour titles, including the 2011 Dick Weber PBA Playoffs. From Columbia, South Carolina, Dick Allen. The number three seeds, eight career titles, including the 2010 U.S. Open. From Langhorne, Pennsylvania, Bill O'Neill. His partner is only one of four players to win three consecutive PBA Player of the Year awards. From Orange, New South Wales, Australia, Jason Belmonte. The number two seeds, he's the reigning PBA Player of the Year. From Huntington, Indiana, E.J. Tackett. His partner is a past PBA Rookie of the Year with two PBA titles. From Yakima, Washington, Marshall Kent. Our number one seeds. Winner of the 2015 PBA Wolf Open. Looking for his second career title today. From Taylorsville, North Carolina, Kyle Troop. His partner won last year's Fire Lake PBA Tournament of Champions. From Gothenburg, Sweden, Jesper Svensson. And there they are, the 10 competitors you're going to see. They're all remarkable bowlers in their own right, major champions among them. So, Randy, the question is, who do you like? Uh, some pretty great bowlers out there and some great teams, but I think the fan favorites have to be Belmonte and Bill O'Neill. Belmonte coming off of an incredible February where he captured two majors. Bill O'Neill, his last victory, ironically, a doubles championship. But when you look at our number one seed, this is a, a, a very unique dynamic. You've got Kyle Troop and his two-handed style, and Jesper Svensson, his two-handed style, both from opposite sides of the lane. I think if Kyle Troop can hold up his end, he's got a monster partner in Jesper Svensson. But the team that I'm eyeballing, EJ Tackett and Marshall Kent. Nobody outstruck Marshall Kent in this building all week. Yeah, a lot of rev rate on that combination. Let's take a look at our step ladder because the opening match will feature, of course, the fifth seed, DJ Archer and his partner, Sean Maldonado, against the number four seed, Dick Allen and Zeke Bates. Zeke making his ESPN debut. Then Belmo and O'Neill in the second match. Match three, Kent and Tackett versus the winner of match number two. And at the top of the ladder, Jesper Svensson and Kyle Troop. And the number one team is standing by with our Kimberly Pressler right now. Thanks, guys. You mentioned it before that these guys are kind of an unlikely pair, both two-handed bowlers, but from the opposite side of the lane. So I have to ask you, Jesper, what did you see in Kyle that you decided to ask him to be your partner? Um, you know, a great person, really fun guy. Kyle loves him, and, I mean, 
he gets pumped up and that makes me pumped up. So uh, we have had a really good time together and I hope we can finish it off today. Well, it's all about having fun. Thank you so much. Now, Kyle, when we talked earlier, you said you were pretty shocked when he asked you to be his teammate. Why is that? Yeah, he's one of the best two-handers out here in our sport right now. And whenever he asked me, I didn't skip a beat. You know, I definitely said yes, even no matter who else I had in mind. You know, I definitely was ready to bowl with him. Like he said, we've had a great time out here. Our chemistry is great. We're two young, fired up guys. Team four hands, you know, we're going to get the job done today. Team four hands, I love it. This unlikely pair works really well because they're sitting in the number one seed. So we'll see you guys later in the show. Guys, back to you in the booth. Kimberly, thank you very much. Randy, take us through this oil pattern we're on today. Well, it's the Mark Roth 46-foot oil pattern. And when talking with the players, they said that it gets really cliffed. And what that means is it gets wet dry. Dry to the outside part of the lane, heavy oil to the inside part of the lane. Speed control a must on this oil pattern. This ought to be a blast. You hear the crowd here. It's like this all the time when the tour's in town. And this building has been renovated. We're actually in the new part. We'll talk a little bit more about that. But right now, first bowler of the day is DJ Archer. And he gets a kick on the 10 to get things going. You're heavy right there. You're heavy right there. Come on, let's go. Now, this is the first shot that Zeke Bate who's only been a professional since late last year, has thrown on television. Unusual setup here. We're actually using lanes two and three. And leaves a little four behind. Why uh, lanes two and three? It, it just gives us a little bit better arena setting for the fans. And that we have. And there aren't too many other places in the country where you have a mezzanine. Uh, the National Bowling Stadium, of course, in downtown Reno has that kind of feel to it, but much larger than this, where fans can sit up top if they care to. Uh-oh. Oh, uh -oh. Whoa, you know, he would have made a 410 if he, if he had to. Remember, it's not how, it's how many. And Zeke is glad that that frame is over. Trust me, nothing's more frightening than your first couple of shots on national television now Dick Allen understands the TV lights pretty well oh my absolutely buried in that pocket Dick Allen's had a lot of success in this building all day fearless so here is Sean Maldonado now, they're bowling alternate frames. It's kind of Baker style, only without five bowlers like you normally get in a Baker team match. And a ringer on that 10 pin. I don't think the players are going to have too much trouble getting to the pocket today. I think it's all about getting the corners out. Well, you get those first couple of shots out of the way and reduce the nerves. Nicely done. Hear that ball rolling over the thumb hole on the way down. Throwing a plastic spare ball to cut down any down lane motion. You want to talk about fun? This guy here, DJ Archer, fun with a capital F. Wait till he gets going. That's pretty good. Oh, and he was right. That was very good. And he, too, burned by a ringing 10. Two-time PBA champion, DJ. Well, it looks like the last two shots from Sean and DJ just kind of sat in the oil about a foot too long. And then that late snap creates that ringing 10 where the 6 goes around the 10 pin. Take care of that with a, a little bit softer speed or maybe a little more right to left. Take care of that 10 pin first. No problem there for DJ. If we're lucky and he gets on a roll, we might see him dance a little bit. He's pretty good at it. Only if we're lucky. He does have some swag, though. I'll mm -hmm. tell you that. No question. So Zeke Bate, 24 years old, out of Westerville, Ohio. A this time, huh? uh, mom and dad, Lisa and Bob, supported him. Oh. 
Beautiful shot, 10 straight back for Bates. Dave, I, I thought he told us something very interesting the other day when we interviewed him. He said, when we asked about his nerves for today, he said, you know, I've made television in my head hundreds of times. Now it's for real, and now I'm just looking to have fun. That's how you embrace the pressure and have fun with it. Love his attitude. Another great attitude right here from Columbia, South Carolina, three-time champion in Dick Allen. Perfect. Eight pin a little late to the party, but down it goes. Both Zeke and Dick Allen going much straighter, much tighter line to the pocket. Better that, carry. Yeah, all is fair and love and war from this audience here. They'll say things mostly nice, almost always nice as a matter of fact, but they are encouraged. Make a little noise here. Go! Ooh, soft tail. I think he knew it when he threw it. Right up. Sean looking for his first tour title. Six pin goes to the sidewall and just lays there dead. The dreaded flat tag. You might have seen Sean at the U.S. Open last year when he bowled against Francois Lavoie. Sean bowled well, 211. Francois beat him by 89 pins with a 300. So the Archer Maldonado crew down 22 through four. Take a look at DJ's arsenal. Phase two and Daredevil Trick. And he's got a phase two right here. The messenger is going to be lazy. Fall to pit. Both DJ and Sean are big angle oh, players, and, and it's affecting their pin carry. They have not missed the pocket and have not doubled yet. So at this point, the old cliche straighter is greater? Right now it is. Started with a strike, and then it's 10 pin, 10 pin, 10 pin, 10 pin. Well, in golf, you call this ham and egg. It. But at the point, it's not good enough the way that Allen and Bate are starting to hit the pocket. So Bates' last shot in the third frame was tremendous. He's got truth, tooth, pearl, and an X. He's got a truth, pearl in his hand right now. Well, he's not afraid of these lights one bit. Truth? You can't handle the truth. <laughs> and he's making new friends all the way through it, too. definitely helps when you make your first ever telecast and it's a doubles competition as you take a look at Dick Allen's arsenal he's going with a primal rage remix oh yes those pins didn't stand a chance I think uh, Dick feels like he stole that one well, that's five in a row for Zeke Bate and Dick Allen. So Archer and Maldonado are going to come up with something and come up with something quickly to advance to take on Jason Belmonte and Bill O'Neill in our next match. All right, back inside. Gives you an idea here from the pins perspective what we have here at Bayside. This is the whole new area. Last year, the tournament, the event was bowled in the east side. Now we're west side, Randy. And there's a great look at some of the folks up on the balcony. And now we get right back down to where we need to be with DJ Archer and Sean Maldonado in a 43-pin hole. Evan struck since the first. Meantime, Allen and Bate, five straight. And Sean rolling a no-rules pearl right now. And getting a seven-pin to get ripped. That looked like he made a little right and got the ball to face up finally. Well, this doubles team of Maldonado and Archer actually made a TV appearance back in 2015. They've done quite well together, but right now they've dug themselves a pretty big hole. Oh, 
big snapping hook there, and it did not get all ten. Yeah, that's a great shot that DJ made, but it's just the wrong angle, and the ball not going through the pins the correct way to knock all ten down. It's that's all carry comes down to. You take a look at how many times the players have hit the pocket. Nobody has missed the pocket yet, except for the light hit in the first frame for Zeke. Every other ball has been in the pocket. DJ Archer and Maldonado could not strike. That was a good one. That was a good one. And already the crowd beginning to warm up to Zeke Bate. He joined the PBA September of 2016. Did bowl in nine events, part of the fall swing. Did have a couple of top 25 finishes at the Bear Open and the Chameleon Championship in Reno. The Bear Open in Allen Park, Michigan. Well, he's just hammering it right now. That's six in a row for this team. Well, it's looking pretty good now for Dick Allen and Zeke Bait. They're just piping it just inside first arrow, and they're on a six-bagger. Zeke Bait, well, a little closer to second arrow. With that shot there, they crack open a six-pack. So here is Allen. He knew it. Make it seven. Yikes. This is sending a message to those who were standing by waiting to bowl what they might be in for. <laughs> Max score for Archer Maldonado, 227. There you go. Not a lot of celebration yeah. when you're down by that many. Yeah. This absolute brutality from the nine pin. Yeah. Just entry angle, not throwing it bad. Unfortunately, our sport, everybody goes by score, and that's how they basically gauge how well or how bad you bowled. And DJ and Sean both bowled a nice game, but just wrong angles into the pins. Take a look at our other finishers and Anthony Simonson, Connor Pickford, the defending champion. And Andres Gomez, congratulations on being a father for the second time. He finished in seventh uh, and left Maine and went right, and he and his wife had a beautiful child together. We see Chris Barnes and Tommy Jones. That's a very potent team right there in the number 15 spot. Dean Weber and Tim Mack. Tim Mack had a 300 in this building. And this group may have almost had a 300 and they had not spared in the first frame. These two, they're moving on. Yeah. Pretty cool when you see the newcomers. I remember, oh, what was it, about a month and a half or two months ago, we we watched uh, watched Michael do what he did. He had the Tang brothers on the show, and Michael almost came away with a Masters title, but he went up against Belmonte. Everything going the way of the Dick Allen Zeke Bate team. Yeah, the Tangs certainly weren't afraid of the lights. Yeah. They've been, you know, through college, they've had some television experience, but still, they were ready to go. Well, Darren had made a telecast right. prior, but Michael, was, it was his first time, and, I mean, he looked like a 10-year veteran out there. Zeke Bates kind of looking the same way now. Back tap on the four. <laughs> You know, personalities kind of make the team, and that personality of Dick Allen is something different, I promise you. As we take a look at this light mixer, the four pin stands and falls late, and that is your Barbasol close shave. Well, for 290, with Belmo and O'Neill standing by. 
Ball change here, Dave. See how much more aggressive that one is? Yes. But at least he knows it moving on. Yeah, with the match in hand, there was good time to experiment. So Maldonado and Archer will finish in fifth. Allen and Bate will move on to take on the number three seeds. The good friends Bill O'Neill and Jason Belmonte. Belmonte looking for his first doubles title. He has about everything else, so why not get a doubles title yep. added to that resume? Okay. Oh, man, he made that! <laughs> <laughs> Crazy. Well, there's our hammer tough spare replay. That's yeah, just like you would draw it up, just slide the four into the ten, and Sean does that perfectly. That'll make lunch taste a little bit better. Did he not barely kick the four out the first time he saw a four pin and slid it across the lane in the second frame? Yeah. yeah. And we thought, you know what, if he had a four ten, he would have made it. But made the same shot again. So there are your winners of this match. Moving on, Zeke Bate in his televised debut was nothing short of sterling. And his partner, Dick Allen, held up his end. Now they take on the three seeds, Elmo and O'Neill. Coming up. All right, so already people are blowing up Marshall's phone. I'll explain why in a moment. But we need to tell you about PBA.com and check out the latest PBA Bowling Challenge mobile game for iPhone, iPad, and Android devices. More than 18 million people have downloaded the popular game, which now features new ball options being released each week through early June. So click on the PBA Bowling Challenge mobile game link at PBA.com and get started today. Now, the, the big question that's come up just in the off time is where are the Marshall Holman t-shirts? <laughs> um, yeah. you, you come up with an answer for that while we show you that Dick Allen and Zeke Bate have moved on to take on Jason Belmonte and Bill O'Neill. But Marshall Kent, E.J. Tackett, the two seeds awaiting the winner of this match. Jesper Spencer and Kyle Troop at the very top. And let's go to Kimberly. Thanks, guys. I am joined by Jason Belmonte and Bill O'Neill. So, Jason, you've won just about everything under the sun except a doubles title. And, Bill, the last title you earned was a doubles title. So what are you going to do today to help you guys get into the winner's circle and, of course, get this guy a title he's never earned? Yeah, I mean, I just got to do my job. I know he's going to do his. I've watched him bowl enough on TV. I, I know what he's bringing to the table. So I just got to get out there and have confidence and uh, do what I do. Well, thank you so much, Bill. So, Jason, he's got a lot of confidence in you. Uh, what do you think about what he said? Yeah, I mean, you know, Billy and I, look, we're, we're best mates out here. So to bowl with your best mate, it's, it's really enjoyable. It's exciting. We haven't won a double yet. So today's the day we're going to try and tick that off our bucket list. All right. Well, good luck to both of you guys. We're going to send it back to the group. All right. Thank you, Kimberly. And you may have heard in the background somebody yelling out, Ozzy, 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 oi, 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 for Belmo. Marshall, how does this match set up for you? And by the way, Marshall's in the booth with this. I forgot to mention that we invited him to join us for this match. Thank you, Dave. Randy, it's great to be here in the booth for you guys. You know, I, I look at this match and, and uh, you know, I see what Allen and Zeke Bates did that, that the first game. And, uh, and you know, Belmo and, and, uh, and his partner, they're, they are certainly the favorites, but uh, maybe only on paper. Dick Allen will start. Well, this looks like game one all over again. You know, I watched Dick Allen the first game. I was standing right behind him, and as, as Randy has said in the past, you need a little room to throw a lot of strikes, and uh, we see a great balance at the line. He has room to the left, room to the right. His ball is carrying. Sure makes bowling fun, doesn't it, Randy? Yeah, it really does. So Belmo will start for this team on the right-hand lane. Oh, yeah, we've seen that a few times, too. Come on. This devastation of the pins. I think uh, also Belmonte and O'Neill watched that first game and realized that a lot of angle was not the answer. That straighter is greater, that straighter is going to knock the corners out, and that's exactly what Jason Belmonte tried to do there. Yeah, we watched DJ Archer the first game, and my gosh, he pulled, pulled a great game, but he was in a trap. Yeah. His ball just didn't have the right angle to carry. Bill O'Neill, that 10-pin, absolutely destroyed. 
Well, speaking of DJ Archer and Sean Maldonado, they're standing by with Kimberly. Thanks, guys. So, DJ, Sean, you know what? You guys played well, but that, that, that 10 pin did not want to go down for you guys. Why do you think that is? You know, um, our angles are just bad. You know, I, I, when you get nervous, you know, your, your hand tends to kind of come around a little bit, and that's what mine did a couple times. And I know it's the same way with Sean, but, uh, you know, we hit the pocket. They just didn't fall down for us. But, uh, you know, we'll be back. You know, this environment, this tournament, Mark Roth, Marshall Holman, we'll be back again. All right. And, Sean, how do you think this experience was for you? Um, it it could have been better. But, uh, like DJ said, the 10 pin wouldn't fall for us. Uh, apparently, that fell for them a lot better than us. So, uh, all we can do is just get ready for the next tournaments. All right. Well, we'll hope to see you guys back again next year then. Guys, back to you. Thank you, Kimberly. It'd be a great team to see in action one more time. The number five seed. It's exactly what you said to me, Randy. Angles. This man's got the right angle. That's through the nose of touch, and he got another back tap on the floor. And he's getting a lot of love. That one read just a little bit early and looked like it was going high, and then Woo! laid there in the great break of trip in the four pin. Watch this. A little early. Two pin sidewall, trip four. That's a righty's best friend if I've ever seen it. Got to make an adjustment for Dick Allen on that lane coming up in his next frame. So third frame, Belmo. Switching over to the left lane. His ball came in very high flush in this first frame. My correct move, he's still on the right lane and he leaves a quiet 10. You know, when, you, when your rev rate is as high as Belmonte's is, it's over 600. Uh, I think the tour average is probably about 400, but when you have a 600 rev rate and you flat 10, that is not a good sign. No. Well, he looks like he's using a ball that, that is a fairly weak for him so he can be a little straighter down the lane. Take care of his business on the spare. Was Belmo the only one that wears those gold shoes? I believe those are custom made for Jason Belmonte. There we go. And they fit in this building, don't they? They do. This building is solar powered, uh, so they may need an extra panel just to get those <laughs> shoes. <laughs> O'Neill just 10 in the pit. So Marshall looks like Bill O'Neill's just slightly left of Dick Allen. He's going to burn up that spot in the front part of the lane. His angle's really good. I wonder how that's going to affect Dick Allen's bar reaction. Remember last time Dick Allen went trip four. It's just slightly left of where Dick Allen's playing, and you can see it. It's the, it's right, got, it's the right shape, though. It's got to force Dick Allen to move a little bit further left, I would think. It's got to hurry. Come on, run down, run down. They're fortunate not to have the 10 pin with it. So 2 4 8 or bait. All right, so what's the trick here, Randy? Well, he's going to have to throw a, a, a curve into this to, to cover the back pin, the eight pin. Oh, get three. You got it. Get three indeed. Yeah, he thought it was going to overhook. Three and easy. He covered it. It's not how again, it's how many, and he covered it perfectly. But we'll see what kind of uh, early check that Dick right, Allen gets on. on this left lane. And quite honestly, Marshall, I still have a hard time calling him Rich, Dick and not Richie. I know, I mean, but I, I asked him about that. He said, he's, as he's gotten older, he just prefers to be called Dick Allen. So, has he moved left? Yes. Yeah. He, is he still striking? He still needs to move yeah. further yeah. left. He's going to keep going. He is so ready. fortunate that his misses back on, back on. are working. This is definitely farther left of where he started in game one. And that's still... It's too high flush. It's, it is too high flush. So yeah, there'll be another, what do you think? A two and one, one and one, two and one left? Yeah, easily. That would be two with, with his feet, one with his target. Now, let's see what Belmonte's reaction looks like here. Really high flush and then a weak 10. His reaction is not good right now. I, I don't, I'm not sure I like that ball. I think he needs to go with something stronger. I agree. And uh, he, he just walked back and said, how did that not hook? He needs to go to a stronger ball. Yeah. 
Yeah, he's perplexed. Yeah. Not, not, and the game, a game of bowling goes so fast. It's just, you don't have enough time to be confused this late in the game. No, sir. Jason throwing a timeless phase two right now. Hurry up. <laughs> The way of shooting spares has changed over the years, hasn't it? <laughs> well, it has. You know, you've got you, you've got two choices: either the either the strike ball that, that hooks on an amazing amount, or you can go with the spare ball, go high and hard. But uh, yeah, for the most part, um, it's high and hard, especially for single pins for the for the game today. O'Neill's got a nice look. Oh yes, seven ten broken up. Two messengers arrive to take care of business. That was dirty. He's got a great look, and even with Belmonte struggling, it's still close. It is very close with Allen and Bate coming off the strike in the fifth, and Balbo and O'Neill getting a key strike in the sixth. Close match will bring you the finish from Portland when we return. And two Hall of Famers, Randy Peterson and Marshall Holman. I'm Dave Lamont. Welcome back to the Roth Holman PBA Doubles, match number two, presented by MainQuarterly.com here, live on ESPN. Television rookie Zeke Bate has performed like a veteran, as like my two partners would do here, just striking like mad. Did have trouble in the fourth frame. That's about the third back tap for four for this team today. Well, that was a huge break because they were working on a strike. Remember last time on the right lane, Zeke went light. That turns that strike Richie Allen threw in the fifth into a double. But what was interesting was the ball reaction. It looked like it checked early and then hooked down lane, but it still tripped the four for a double. That spare that Bate made him was a tough one, man. Really huge in this match. And Allen just continues to throw X. A great adjustment from Dick Allen. He moved further left on the lane, got more oil in the front part of the lane. The ball held pocket, and it's still carrying like a dream. You know, guys, in my opinion, if Belmonte doesn't strike on this ball, they have no chance of winning. I'll be interested to see if he stays with that same ball. Well, he struck in the first frame, went nine spare, eight spare, and that was a tough spare in the fifth. That's the same ball. Oh, and he goes through the face. Oh, boy. Remember, at the top of the show, I talked about the oil pattern, 46 feet. Clift, meaning wet dry. Clift is the new wet dry, Marshall. Back in our day, it was wet dry. And the players all told me the same thing. He has the wet dry. He went light, light, makes another move, and it's five through the middle. Well, I don't think that Jason Belmonte will be retiring soon, but that kind of lane condition certainly encouraged me to look for another job. <laughs> Gonna crank it and only take one, so the count really takes a blow there. And suddenly they're down 46. <laughs> Please don't get don't get the idea. I think Jason Belmonte needs to find another job. He's doing just fine with his with his bowling. O'Neill brings a 10. Well, it might be another year for Jason Belmonte to win a doubles title. They got to figure that's going to happen. He's done everything else in the sport. Marshall, when you had the wet dry reaction, what did you do? I my. My main move was always to move further left and maybe soften it up and trying to get it to hook into the into the wet. But but doing that, at best, if I hit the pocket, I'd leave a ten pin. So right. it was um, it was a trap. You know, and the the equipment was so much different back then. Now, when I see wet dry, I go to a bigger ball, I go to a stronger ball, something earlier to blend that out. Yeah, we we did not have those options back. No, back in the '90s, we had a U dot and it was black. And then we had a scarlet U dot. That's right. Oh my! I tell you what, doesn't seem to matter at the moment what equipment Zeke Bader or Dick Allen is using. They've got everything going their way. Now they're taking down the big dogs right now. O'Neill and Belmo certainly the favorites coming into the game with what their records have been in the past. But for now, it's uh, it's Zeke and Dick Allen. Their first game was a 287. Uh, that, one, that one read early. Yeah. 
He looks over at his ball rep and went, wow. Yeah. But the good news for Dick Allen is he has he has time to, to adjust. Now, Marshall, do you throw a strike ball at this to try to get a read? Well, he could if he wants to. I, I, I don't think I would have been that, that forward thinking back in my day, but. Um, I mean, it's his last shot of the game on this lane. Yeah, what the heck? Why not? That's a beautiful pocket conversion of the 3 6 10 for he Allen. Did, he did not. Well, I can make a huge move. Matches in hand. He just yeah. said, I can make a huge move. Oh, my God. That wheels. I mean, I. So we'll see if he does. Domo. That's the Domo reaction uh, that we are used to seeing. Well, he tried to do the right thing, which was going straighter. But it didn't work. Get a new partner. Yeah. T it's time to get a new partner. Minus, uh, what does that say? 100? <laughs> now you strike. Time. Put me on the bench. <laughs> time to get a new partner, he said. That's great. Somehow I doubt that will happen. No. These two, as Jason said, are best mates. Yeah. yeah. Billy's not kicking Jason to the curb anytime soon. I think I'd give another shot. Or 10. So standing by. If you like rev rate, you know if I needed stick that, around. That's like a five-seven, right? <laughs> you know that. Thanks the funny thing is, better. this is the uh, third time these guys have made it to the finals, and the third time they're not going to take the trophy home. <laughs> the bill of Pennsylvania for Jason to Australia. But standing by, Marshall Kent and 2016 PBA Player of the Year, EJ Tackett. The number the two I've had on this pattern all week. Marshall, I challenge you to a doubles all match. I'll take O'Neill. You can have Belmonte. <laughs> yeah. I'm just putting it out there. It's our lowest game, too, I think. Belmonte would need a lot more help than I could give him. <laughs> and so would O'Neill. <laughs> so they will finish with a 2-11. That is... Not going to be enough to take down the number four seeds. Good luck, Marshall. 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 Good luck, well, next up, the number two seed, Marshall Kent, E.J. Tackett will take on a team that right now, hot Dick Allen and Seek Bates. Match number three is next. As I'm with Marshall Kent and E.J. Tackett, the number two seed. So, Marshall, rumor has it that you struck more than anybody leading up to today. But what do you think it was about your chemistry with your teammate E.J., now the player of the year, that helped you guys earn the number two seed? Uh, our, our personalities are pretty similar, so we helped each other stay pretty relaxed during the whole week. Uh, even times of struggle, we managed to stay relaxed and put some good games together, and here we are on the show. And here you are, number two seed. So, EJ, what was it like uh, bowling with your friend here, Marshall? Oh, it was absolutely fantastic. He carried me all week. You think he's going to do that today? I sure hope so. All right, well, we'll see how it goes, guys. We're going to send it to you. All right, thank you, Kimberly. This one ought to be really interesting because you got the... Allen and Bay team that are riding a hot streak, and now you're going to run into two real power players who combined aren't even 50 years old. They're both 24. In fact, so is Bait. So Dick Allen will start things for the number four seeds. They defeated Archer and Maldonado in the first match with a 287. They took down. Jason Belmonte and Bill O'Neill just moments ago. In fact, Jason and Belmo will be joining Kimberly here shortly. Well, he didn't get a back tap on the four that time. Jason, the hook and the oil line left. He's trying to get away from that early hook and you can see that ball just kind of skated all the way to the head pin. The first thing that went through my mind was how the lanes were going to transition once EJ Tackett and Marshall Kent took the lanes. 
Hold me up, unit, unit. Well, you Hold can see the, the great thing about yeah. having that blue yeah. oil, and we'll get a chance to take a good look at it later on, is how it has absorbed the punishment through the first two games. It's going to get a lot of punishment right here. And this man's been bowling quietly, bowling a lot better as of late. He's not won a title yet, which is shocking. He has two, but it's been a television has been, I let me correct that. He has two titles, but television for some down, reason has not been his best friend. Two guys, however, who do respond well to television are standing by with Kimberly. That's Bill O'Neill and Jason Belmonte. Kimberly. Thanks, guys. I know this is a disappointing loss for you, but I saw you guys smiling out there. Jason even joked about you needing to get a new partner for next year's. It wasn't a joke, Jason says. So what are your thoughts on that? Well, I mean, the, we've made this double show uh, three, times, three times, and it's been it's been pretty uh, scripted. It's like he leads the field by a lot. I bowl somewhere in the middle of the pack, and then when we get to the show, he throws like one strike and has a couple opens. It's been exactly the same every time. So I think I'm going to keep my partner, but we're just going to try to figure out how to get him to throw a couple more strikes on TV. And Jason, why did you decide not to switch balls? Well, we talked about it, and after the the first three shots, we felt like the speed was a little too high. So in that split frame I just I just slowed down a little bit which is exactly what we wanted to do and we saw it over hook so we felt like it was the right ball we felt like it was the wrong speed uh, in the ninth frame I moved a little left off of that and you could tell it looked good down the lane so I blame Bill for telling me not to stand there from the first frame well you did get one strike so that's a good thing all right hopefully we'll see you guys then next year as well thank you Guys, we're going to send it back to you. All right, Kimberly, thank you very much. You just may have heard EJ Tackett strike. If you closed your eyes, that thing was incredible. Well, that, that was a pretty straight shot, but he is using your thing, and that ball's not going to curve a whole lot. No, second frame, and now Zeke. No changes to his game. He's a good five or six boards left of where he started. Inside of second arrow now. And I'll tell you the other thing he's doing, he is playing with the crowd. He's yeah. playing to the crowd, and he's playing with the crowd, and that's going to get you more fans. And now the artist formerly known as Richie Allen, Dick Allen, steps up on the left lane. And he'll mix him up and score the strike. Out of Columbia, South Carolina, three-time titleist. Richie's only 38, but he's like the old man of the telecast. Especially this game, because here's Kent at 24 with the two titles, and I, what I tied my young tongue in knots on earlier was that he has won twice, but he's never won a match on television, which is so hard to believe. With talent like that. I did an exhibition. Um, at a military base, Air Force base with Marshall, and Marshall threw three in a row. He threw it with one hand, then he threw it with two hands, and then he threw it left-handed. He's a, an incredibly gifted young man. And his partner is the reigning player of the year, E.J. Tackett, who picked up a major in big February in Oklahoma. You know what his nickname is here? Got a kick on the floor? No, I do not. Squirrel. Really? Yep. There it is right there. Yep. The squirrel, baby. With the glasses. <laughs> ah. Yep. A lot of those signs on posts everywhere. I think there's a Randy Peterson sign floating around there somewhere. You know, it's a, it's a gift when you've got to reverate as high as EJ Tackett does, and you can go straight. Doing it with your thing and getting a great break, tripping the four. No four trip for Zeke. This is just a little bit right of the last shot he threw on that lane and it checked just a hair early. So he's got to start thinking about the transition that's being created by the high rev rate of Marshall Kent. Bates, two events this year. 79th the PBA Players Championship and the USBC Masters. He was well back in the field as well, but he's making a lot of noise in this one.
So Dick Allen, last title, the 2011 Dick Weber PBA playoffs. His first title was 2002 in Dallas, first time he made it on television. <laughs> Messenger's got it, yeah, there's any doubt about that. I got one! I UPS! Got one. I got a scout, you gotta be kidding me! Well, he's uh, he's being a little sarcastic at the fact he sent a messenger over, or as they like to call it here, Bayside Bowl, the UPS shot. And there's the head pin going to the sidewall, rolling over and taking the tent out. <laughs> I got a messenger. I got a messenger. Life's complete. Some people don't need them. Yeah, normally when you throw it there, they they kind of all go off the deck at once. Whimpering. Come on, he's a. <laughs> Whimpering. Good one. Well, it doesn't get any easier for the pins here either. Yeah. And it's the tank rampage, so yeah, that hook rate, that's pretty teeny. Well, and, and that's the indicator that he is throwing urethane. That might cross. Yeah, that was left of left. And he broke up all the trouble, though, so he has a very manageable six pin to take care of. Not a good shot here by E.J. Tackett. He's trying to go straight, but big left on that one. Lucky only leaving the six pin. So the question would be for somebody who maybe has not seen much of E.J. Tackett. He's obviously a slender guy, maybe 120 pounds. Where does he get that kind of rev rate from? Well, I think it's also important to note that he, he throws 16 pounds, too. Okay. So the, the power comes from a cupped wrist and elbow at the bottom of the swing. It's like throwing a yo-yo. He gets to the top of the swing, unwinds, and just pounds on it. Lots more to come here at Bayside Bowl. Stay with us. This is the third match. It's going to be a real good move. And you're going to do what you're supposed to now, Bob. You're going to do what you're supposed to on this one. Well, he was talking to himself saying, Ball, we're going to make a move. Ball, you're going to do what you're supposed to do. He moves in, lofts it a little bit. And apparently the ball has ears. <laughs> Come on, Nick. Come on. You know, if you find a bowling ball with ears, it's going to be a big seller. I'm telling you. <laughs> this two uh, pulled even. Got to love the Mark Roth t-shirt right to Richie's right. Oh, get there. You know, the messenger went behind it. That certainly had the power to get there to take out the one. But it didn't happen. That was almost back-to-back -back messengers for Dick Allen, but you see it just goes behind the 10. Kind of an unfortunate break there. Well, so scrap the Mac 269 for Allen and Bate. That's a big conversion there. You can't make any big mistakes here. Ah, Superman. Marshall. Like it. Kent. Here's Marshall's arsenal going with a hypercell. <laughs> they all kind of look the same. <laughs> they you feel the vibrations of those strikes over here in our booth. Good boy, baby. Looks solid. Come on, What an interesting match we'll have, regardless of who wins, because you've got a pair of two-handers and the number one seed. There's the Tackett connection right there. Kyle Troop, the righty. Jesper Svensson, the two-handed lefty. They're the number one seeds. And fashion forward to boot. Better shot. Ooh. Messengers stay home. Not needed. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come 
good shot. Make a good move, make another good shot. He did. Yeah. That's violent. Yeah, he's chasing it nicely though. He's staying ahead of transition. Let's go. Let's go. And making good shots. So his volleyball is a fabulous listener. We still got a chance. And they do still have a chance. If there's a big mistake Good made pitch. by Kent Tackett, yeah, they do have a chance. They obviously are running out of time. And let me point out that Marshall Kent missed seven single pins in this competition, Eight. if it comes to that. Oh, a ringer. Wobbled, but does not go down. Needed that one. And their run might be coming to an end. Last couple of shots for Dick Allen have been just wonderful. And all he has is that to show for it, the ah. 10 pin. Well, even a little contact from the six, too, just to tease you. Hang on there. All right, we got it. He knows the score. You can see the look of disappointment. I mean, I got. Barring again, trying to make it stand up. Anything tragic from Marshall Kent and EJ Tackett? They'll both for the title. All they need are two marks, one in the ninth, one in the tenth. They'll be in the 230s. Max score for Allen and Bate, 228. Ooh. And there's a single pin. Easy. Now, he did talk to me about why he missed so many single pin spares. And he said, well, you know, I've been working on drifting a little more left, and it kind of affected my spare shooting, but I'm not worried about it. No, he didn't seem concerned. <laughs> and, then, and hence the sarcastic pat on his own back. <laughs> <laughs> I got one. <laughs> <laughs> E.J. Tackett's left one pin back. He got away with a bit of a bad shot in the six. Otherwise, he's been dialed in. They need a mark to shut him out. Just keep it on line. <laughs> That's on line. Ten back, and they're moving on. You know, it's a little reminiscent of when Belmonte won the Masters throwing urethane. EJ Tack at extremely high rev rate. He's able to, to, to point it or go straight with the wood. They needed one, yeah. they got ten. That'll do it. Moving on, it'll be number two versus number one for the Roth Holman Doubles Championship. I tell you what, uh, though Zeke Bate and Dick Allen, their tournament has ended. Boy, they pick up a lot of fans here in Portland if they decide to come back as a team. But Dick Allen's always been a, a fan favorite here. They love yeah, him. Yeah, that's right. You know. Great ball. Great ball, bro. Great ball. But it's the Squirrel and Superman. Sounds like an old Saturday morning cartoon. Moving up against the righty-lefty two-handers. What an interesting match this ought to be with Jesper Svensson, the lefty, and ridiculous talent, and the right-hander, Kyle Troop, another crowd favorite here. Hey, Zeke, you saw the finish. You saw the finish. Oh, yes. Uh, don't leave yet, Zeke. Player of the okay. year. <laughs> Reminding him, and didn't realize that he got to post a number. Now another impressive <laughs> performance by a, a newcomer to television, Zeke Bates. Oh, okay. <laughs> That's crazy. Thank you. Thank you. Something he'll never forget. What a great experience for that young man.
know, he probably won't have to pay for a drink in this town tonight. <laughs> Great point. They drink in this town? Yeah, nice finish, Zeke. Not a way to go, Zeke. Fantastic bowling from Bolte and Dick Allen. They just ran into too much Marshall Kent and EJ Tackett. And we are set up for a fantastic finish. Here's what they're going to bowl for. Well, that and a check as well, needless to say. Get ready. We're going to crown a new champion in our next match coming right up. And Randy, an interesting story that Kyle told us about how they ended up becoming partners. Yeah, they were actually uh, competing against each other uh, in Vegas back in the fall. And I think Jesper was winning, or the match was pretty close. He looks over at Kyle and he says, hey, how would you like to bowl the doubles with me? And Kyle thought he was just trying to get into his head. And of course, Kyle jumped all over it. Well, they're overlooking his shoulder is that menacing squirrel. You'll have to deal with the real squirrel in this match. He knocked the bucket out of there and leaves the 2-5. You know, the thing uh, about Kyle Troop is he is really good at going straight for a two-hander that doesn't use his thumb. He prefers to go straight. Don't chop it. No, nope, he smothered it instead. It's just whether or not he can shape it correctly on that lane that E.J. Tackett's been using urethane on. So here's Marshall Kent. won the 2016 PBA Team Challenge. Won a tournament in Saudi Arabia. Ooh, through the face there. That took a nasty, hard left. Well, this was a big miss to the right. Watch this. He, he hasn't got one this far, this far to the right throughout the entire telecast. I mean, he just hits the dry boards and goes sideways. And a difficult spare. One of Bowler's least favorites. Yeah, the 3-6-10's not a, not a real fan favorite, but when you put the 9 back there, mm. along with the other 3, then it becomes, uh, well, then it becomes an adventure. You see E.J. Tackett, he, he gets Player of the Year in 2016. First off, he wins the World Championship in Reno, gets off the schneid as far as majors go. Yep. Then we flip the calendar, he goes to Japan and wins there for yep. a PBA Tour title, and then grabs a major in Oklahoma. <laughs> Messenger is going to fall short. It's the only downside of throwing urethane when you don't have a lot of angle because there's not enough down lane motion, not enough back end reaction. And you're going to see it right here. Even, even though this is 16 pounds, even with his rev rate, if it gets into that spot there, it's going to be a flat 10. Go after it, he does aggressively. So here is the lefty Jesper Svensson from Sweden. That's why you see Troop, who's nicknamed Afrofish. Svensson from Sweden, so you're seeing literally Swedish fish on a sign there in the audience. And here is a mad talent. Messenger there did not come through for Svensson. Yeah, Jesper's, uh, he's one of my favorites out here to watch. His technique and what he can do to a urethane bowling ball is crazy. And we were talking to some of the guys uh, last night and, and saying, you know, the one thing he's missing is being able to throw the reactive balls. And they said, well, he's working on it. If he gets it. Well, we all know what he can do with urethane and, and, and how he can dominate with urethane. The scary part is what happens if he can do the same thing with reactive? Same. They're not booing, they're yelling true. What do you think of the outfits that uh, this was Kyle Choop's creation here? Just I'll so tell you know. you a quick story about that. 
Yeah, kick on the four. I did a uh, short Facebook Live about an hour before we went on the air, and I went down in the area where they were warming up. And from where I stood, I thought they were in purple. I got them in a different light, and they were <laughs> the gray that you see yeah. there. That's a nice break for Kyle, but I, I'm not real convinced of his ball reaction yet. Remember, he went light, and then he comes back with a trip four. And the first strike for the Kent Tackett team. Much better. That was a good arrow left of where the one prior to that went through the nose for Marshall. All right, Jay. In between third and fourth arrow, he's got to keep that ball into the soup that's in the middle part of the lane. Slap five with our friend Tim Mack, who's advising them today, or advising Marshall. That's through the nose, and that's dead trouble. Ball hooked early. Second time that's happened to him, I believe, today, right? Yeah, the, the, the first time it happened, he left a four pin, but, but this time, watch this ball check early. And then it just never pushes right, goes right through the face. And he leaves the 4 7 10. And now he's looking at it going, wow, that hooked early. We saw this made earlier. Remember, Sean Maldonado made this yeah. in our first match. And then at that point, the match was already decided. Much different scenario than what we just saw there, but Tacky went after it. All right, big shot here for young Jesper Svensson. At age 22, he already has five titles. Three last year. It was the youngest PBA Tournament of Champions winner in Oklahoma in 2016. He's in a pitch black. Kick on that seven. Oh, oh, I did see the Randy Peterson big head. Uh, we, we like to refer to it as Randy Peterson fathead. And the Swedish fish as well. What a beautiful shot there. Now, Kyle Troop, light trip four. What is this going to bring as he's using a haywire? How about that? Flush. Well, you said it. You identified him early as the wild card because you were pretty confident in Spencer. You weren't sure about Troop and his reaction. There's a, a good look at it here. Beautiful shot by Kyle. He's made the nice adjustments. First, he went light, left the 2-5. Then he tripped the 4. That one's flush. And that's how you know a player is tricking it up to get to the yeah. pocket the right way. And they built a 32 pin lead as the open frame of the fourth sits heavy on this Kent Tackett team. Yeah, that's one way you respond. The only way you can respond. Well, Marshall Kent has bowled brilliantly today for his team. EJ Tackett now needs to figure out this left lane. For me, the last shot for him did hook early. If he moves off of it and hits the pocket and flat tens, I think he's got to get out of the urethane ball. Oh boy, they got him right in his backswing. It's okay if they just keep yelling, but when they stop and then start again. So he'll reset it and go back to the beginning with his routine. Well, that's 16 pounds of stop there. It's not easy to do. And he didn't foul, which is the other thing that was a, a threat when you pull up like that. Well, as long as you don't let go of it, it's not a foul. Attack of the seven-time Titleist. <laughs> I guess the interruption did not bother him. That's a good sign. When was the last time you saw E.J. Tackett throw it this straight? Now, that's about the 13th board. Remember, the pocket's at about 17 and a half. 
so bowling on the Mark Roth pattern. He's got about four and a half boards of curve. It's a 46 foot pattern here. Wiped out that seven. Ah! The celebratory pick in the air. Well, if you like great shots and pin action, swipe right. <laughs> Just absolutely filthy. Lead stays at 32. Oh, pretty shot. Kyle Troop came to win today, folks. He's closing in on his second tour title. Beautiful shot. However, Standing in the way, this guy, Marshall Kent. Well, you kind of saw it coming. Every shot was high flush, high flush, high flush. Looks like he did make a move, too. It was a little bit closer to the fourth arrow. He's two for two in single pins. But they are in a major hole now, down 43. Well, they're running out of time because now max score for them is 226. And Troop and Svensson are already at 239. Tackett just had one strike in this match at an open frame in the fourth that kind of turned things in favor of Troop Svensson because that's when they got hot. Kick save and a beauty on the 10. Been interesting if Marshall could have tripped that four. Coming down to the wire now. Yes, for Spence, and he's going to finish the 10th frame for team clothes. <laughs> um, I got to tell you, though, he's, he told us about the outfits. He says, well, I couldn't go too over the top, so I sent yes for this. And he, and he said he actually liked it, so this is what we went with. I'm glad he didn't go too over the top. Yeah. But Jesper is as well. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, I, you don't really need to say a whole lot when Jesper Svensson's got it going. He, he's just incredible to watch. So much like Jason Belmonte in that he brings the wow factor back to our sport. You watch him throw it, you watch what he does, and you just it just wows you. And again, from Gothenburg, Sweden, just 22 years old. Come on, one more. Let's go. <laughs> Running a pit play. Troop and Spencer have won it. Not a lot of Vegas marriages work out, Randy. This one has. <laughs> well, you know, back in my day, we didn't see a lot of guys with picks, uh, especially when they threw a hit to win they didn't break the sticks up but i'll tell you what i think it works quite nicely here in portland maine what pete weber is to sunglasses kyle troop may be to picks yeah now another really nice performance by marshall kent so tag and kent will finish out they will finish in second place 
And here at Bayside Bowl, your champions, Jesper Svensson and Kyle Troop. And I can't even imagine, uh, Dad, Guppy. You think Guppy Troop's proud right now? I'll tell you who else is proud, Art Trask. Art Trask was like a four-time winner on our tour, friends with Guppy Troop, bowled on tour forever, and was the only guy I knew back then that had a fro. <laughs> Well, I tell you what, so much young talent in this match. Look at the ages of those four. And there's Guppy right there. I mean, the old guy in this group is Troop at 25. Yeah. He's the oldest of these four, which is a great sign for the PBA Tour. This show is laden with rookies of the year, players of the year. Just a great, great ensemble. What else would you expect from Fenton? You know, I think Guppy Troop had a fro at one time as well. I don't remember, to be honest with yes, you. Yes, he did. You can breathe now, Dad. It's okay. A little early Father's Day gift for you, Guppy. You, you know, he was always a crier, too, back in the day. <laughs> uh, Gupster. Anthony Simonson standing next to him. Oh, my goodness. It's just not fair, Randy. It's not fair to be that young and that talented. One more, big dog. Go ahead. One more. With a resting heart rate that appears to be about nine, right? some happy fans and there are your champions Kyle Troop Jesper Svensson with a 279 including striking out from three through ten your champions Jesper Svensson Kyle Troop look at that score line from three through ten absolute perfection as they defeat Marshall Kent and EJ Tackett by a comfortable margin to win the Roth Holman PBA doubles front of a loving house here at Bayside Bowl in downtown Portland, Maine. Kimberly Pressler is standing by for the presentation. Kimberly. Thanks, guys. I'm also joined by Marsha Holman, the namesake of one of the namesakes of this tournament, and also PBA Commissioner Tom Clark. Marsha, would you please do the honors? Absolutely. On behalf of the PBA, Mark Roth and myself, congratulations, Jesper, and congratulations to you, Kyle. That was great. Absolutely great. Great is, is an amazing word for this. You guys look like we're having so much fun out there. But Jesper, we're not used to seeing you with so much emotion, but I can't help but say with this crowd behind you, I can see why. Yeah, I mean, the crowd here is just amazing, and it's so easy to just go with the crowd. I mean, they, they get me pumped up, and I mean, Kyle as well. I mean, he's such a colorful guy, and, you know, it's easy to like, and, yeah, I'm, I'm, you see, they, they, they're just all amazing. So it's super fun being here and winning in front of this crowd. Um, I'm super proud of Kyle's performance this week as well. He's been bowling fantastic, and I'm so happy we did this together. Well, you picked a good partner, and Kyle, you know, we talked to your dad earlier, and you guys have a really special bond. What's it like having him in the crowd here? And he was crying earlier, too. It's a dream come true. I said that the first time. I hope he's here to watch me win every title that I possibly can, because I've looked up to him my whole life. You know, he was my hero growing up. Try to get my colorfulness from him, and... Uh, I couldn't ask for anything better to have him here. What Put into words what it's like winning your second PBA Tour title. Really gets that monkey off my back. You know, that one and done kind of was hanging over my head for a while, but it feels great. And I would also just like to take a moment, like to thank one, my partner, Jesper, for being amazing all week. Storm, Storm, they make the best bowling balls on the market, ultimate bowling products, and high five gear. Thank you to all of them. Well, you guys did an amazing job. Congratulations, guys. We're going to send it back up to you. Kimberly, thank you. Kyle Jesper, congratulations for a magnificent performance. Our next telecast is Sunday at 1 on ESPN. The PBA League quarterfinals. Incredible team bowling. You'll see, well, you got to see it for yourself to really get the flavor 
you'll see some of the same stars you saw on this show in the PBA League. For my partner, Randy Peterson, and for Kimberly Pressler, and on behalf of our ESPN crew, happy Easter. Thank you for watching. Stay tuned for Mizzou and Auburn College Softball coming up right now. Did get a glove on it, which is usually an indication.